Okay, here's something interesting that I'm playing with. I'm using these bottles and I've mixed in uh, some uh, watercolor with water, a little bit of trial and error. And you'll notice when you spray it on, you get some interesting effects. This is light red. It spatters a little bit, depends on how close or how far you get. But you can create some interesting backgrounds. Now this is burnt umber. I don't know how this is going to come out because this looks pretty light in here. Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. I think I'm going to have to make this one a little bit darker. So I'm just using some inexpensive paints here. So when I make these, basically I'm just squirting in some paint. This is, yeah, this is burnt umber. And I'll just put the cap on and shake it up real good. Yeah, this is almost kind of like the light red. It probably needs to be a little bit darker. But you can create some interesting patterns. For your backgrounds that look very, very natural. And of course you could paint it flat too so you don't uh, have too much running. I mean you could let it run this way, you know, let it run back, let it run down, and you can create some interesting backdrops that you wouldn't normally get with a brush. So you can take these, you can mix a blue in, you can mix the light red, this is yellow ochre, which works really well. And uh, burnt umber, I haven't experimented with the other colors yet, but you can see you get a very interesting effect here. So let's dry it. That should be pretty dry. I also got one of these. This is a little portable airbrush. And you can actually use this to, if you can see that, you can move paint around just with air. And then you can also, let's play with the yellow a little bit. We'll put, uh, put some of the yellow in here experiment. I haven't used this yet for yellow. And we'll turn it on. And we should be able to get a little bit more accurate. I think I'm going to have to experiment a little bit because it's coming out a little wet. But It's just like a finer version of the same thing. Probably need to make these paints a little bit stronger. As you can see, it's running because I have it. Uh, I have it uh, vertical. Um, but this is it. You put the paint in here, and this is this recharges. You get these on Amazon for under fifty bucks. So it's kind of a kind of a neat thing. And again, if I want a little bit more of the, let's bring in the light red. So far, my favorites are the light red and the and the yellow. I don't know if I just kind of mix those stronger. Or, but look at that. It makes sort of a neat sky up there. Now, I did the ultramarine blue. It's just kind of weak. Um, but it does work. You can put that in for some water there. And let's...
let's just keep that as a backdrop and see what happens when we paint over the top. Give it a good dry. Actually, one thing I just thought of is I could take uh, a regular spray bottle. Hold on, let me put some water in here. If I wanted to clear out various areas, I could probably... Well, it makes it a little spotty, doesn't it? But, I mean, it could make for some interesting textures. And that'll probably diffuse some. So that's the regular clear spray bottle. Let me dry it again. And this, by the way, is just regular old Canson XL. So let's, uh, let's paint something over the top and see what happens. Let's get out our hake brush. I'll use the small hake brush. Mm. Grab this older one here. And uh, let's commence painting something over the top. Break out the... Make up some dark brown, maybe. And let's see what happens if we put a little... Usual, put the... Put a little mountain range in there, and now, just for experimental sake, let's see, this is with the clear spray bottle, so we get a little bit of, see what happens with that, and then if we want to maybe add some different tones in there, let's see what happens if we hit it with a little bit of the yellow. Now, see, you got to be careful because when you're using that much water, you're gonna start. You're gonna start. Uh, you know. You know the paint's gonna start running. So that's kind of interesting. So let's jump into some. Let's get some blue going here. See how we. Maybe we'll make this, maybe we'll do some greens. Now you're going over the top of other colors, so you gotta kinda think like, what is that color going to make? Because these are transparent, so it's uh, worth experimenting with. So. Darken this up. Let's put another. We'll put another bigger mountain in over here. Add a little bit more blue to that. Just kind of rough that in there.
That's kind of a weird looking blob, isn't it? Let's, we'll make it a little bit higher. And we'll commence with the scraping. This here could probably be done in a little bit more. And I mean, at this point we can scrape, we can, we can take and lift out some paint. Since this is a little bit more of a distant mountain. I don't know if we take a, give it a little shot of yellow. But see, my concern is with that is it just, it's too, you know, there's too much water. And I think if you make that stronger, uh, a stronger color, a stronger mix, you can probably do a little bit more with that. So let's, uh, Let's, let's try doing a little scraping here. And then we'll hit it with some darker brown. Not the world's greatest mountain I've ever done, but uh, it does the job for our little experiment here. And we'll just put some little scrapes in there. Maybe something over there. Let's try giving it just for fun. A little bit of, a little bit of red. Look at that! How it changes the tone already. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. See, usually I'll hit. I'll come in. I'll hit it with a little of the regular spray bottle of water. Um, but putting the colors in there definitely gives it a little more. Let me, let me just go over this again. We're kind of losing it a little bit. This little more distant guy. We'll go ahead and do the same thing I did before and just give it some, some of that. This is why I always say to experiment. And just run it through the water again and just hit those peaks. See, we could do the same thing over here with this guy. Bring in some other shapes of You can even add a little bit of that light red. But I don't really want to do too much more with that. It's kind of a weird looking rock. Now let's kind of, let's bring these down. And then we can always Kind of randomize it there. And we'll come back in with some yellows, maybe. Make some grasses there. Somewhere down here we'll put a, 
I'm gonna put a big tree down here. And we'll give it a scrape. And the tree need to be a little fatter, maybe, maybe, maybe. And, uh, okay. Let's give it a little, give it a little shot of color there, a little reddishness there. And maybe, maybe, maybe we will, we will look for our where I have a brush location problem. Okay, let's take and well, these branches are diffusing out because I just sprayed it. So maybe I should have waited to do the branches, but you know, we can come back to that. We, we can come back to that. And you know what we can do? Um, I mean, it's kind of a neat effect, actually. Let's, uh... Mm. No, I've lost my little spray bottle. Why is it? I misplaced things sitting down, I tell you. I had a little spray bottle with just plain old water in it. And uh, she gone. Oh well. We'll, uh, we'll make do. We'll make do. See, I like to spray the paints. Keep them moist. Why don't we uh, kind of disguise this mountain here while we'll put in a bit of a pine tree. And this guy got kind of coming down from the side. And while we got that on the brush, we'll tap in some, some grasses there. Maybe have some grasses coming in here. Try a little bit of this yellow. Now that I got this much paint on here, it's really not doing much of anything. Um, let's see, we need to we'll make some little distant trees back here. top of that. And well my brush is pretty dark. Let's just redefine this tree. Put some dark on the side, huh? And we could always re-scrape. just did over there. Tisk tisk, as they say. Let's take the airbrush. What happens if we blow this away? Or water. I'm just playing, see what happens. Moving the paint around. All experimental, folks. Try at your own risk all of these techniques. Um, I think we should dry it, really.
Personally, I think it's kind of fun when stuff runs. Let's go back to this dark color and redefine this guy. I'm going to dry brush a little. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe we'll put another tree in over there. He's got a brother. Two trees. Two trees. And while we're at it, let's fix this guy up a little bit. He's got some weird branching going on. And let's give it that nice yellow effect. I actually wanted that coming down lower. Look at that. Old Christmas tree, old Christmas tree. And I'm using the lemon yellow. This lemon yellow is really bright. Actually has kind of a neat effect. A little bit of a forestry effect. Forestry? When I say forest, fantasy. <laughs> you know, looking at this, I just had a bad feeling this reddish look uh, kind of reminded me of these forest fires these poor people are having on TV. I hope that, uh, or these, these wildfires, I hope uh, that that passes for those people. I mean, that's awful. Completely awful. So, you know what? While we got this on the brush, let's, uh, let's just dance this around. See what well, look it looks haphazard what I'm doing and it kinda is. It kind of is. But you know you're trying for a leafy pattern here. And let's make up some. Let's see if we can't get this a green that we want. There, you know what? We'll extend this tree way out so there's not a whole lot of this orange sky because that's kind of bothering me. I mean, yeah, we did all that work with the, we did all that work with the background, but you know what? This is, again, this is experimentation. And this should probably really extend over to there. And boy, that looks interesting. Another thing I like to do in addition to, in addition to the whole, uh, other uh, spraying techniques is uh, I like to come in with some I put some uh, liquid on a toothbrush and I'll do some some of this it's a neat effect too It's kind of a neat scene. I mean, aside from the orange sky giving weird flashbacks. Um, let's go ahead with the, let's spray a little of this yellow on there. I wonder if we make this a little yellower in the sky too. Say we want to make this a little yellower. Look at it, that's kind of neat. We can actually go around. And I'm wondering too, what if we were to make it like a sunset? What if we took uh, and did the quarter trick of course, I need a tissue handy. Do I have one? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Look at this is running into here, which is okay. Look at you get a little of this sun. Actually, this isn't a quarter. What is this? Look at this. Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Anybody remember that place? 
Let's see what happens if I... No, not quite, huh? Not quite. Not quite. Um, I suppose... And if I had my dang water bottle, my little guy, isn't that something? Where did she go? Stand by, folks. Okay, crisis averted, we have a new water bottle. Spray a little in there, what if we, oh, what the heck, what is this brush? What if we take this like filbert looking guy? Just take the tissue. I don't know that it's quite working. It would have been good to do this back when we had the and the paper's piling a little bit. But you know what? You can see it looks brighter on the camera than uh, than all that. All right, let's take a little. Huh? Little drippage there. It's kind of kind of a sun type deal. Now look at my paint ran a little bit here. No, let's not panic. We'll just dab a little out. I like when the paint runs. I think it's I think it's a fun type deal. Look, it looks like we got a little bit of a stream going on here. What happens if we take the little? Let's take the light red. Oh, look at that. Almost like flowers. I don't know how much of that will continue to show, but oh, I like that. See, now I need to practice, or not practice, but experiment with making deeper, richer colors. There, you know what we'll do? We'll dry it real quick. Now look at how this is fading down to not much of that has shown. We'll take what we can get. The watercolor is going to have a little life of its own. And so that we want to, you know, allow that for that uh, to happen. Let's just uh, re add a little bit of that. And uh, if you really want to get them flowers and they're heavy, take yourself some. Look at it. See this red I keep on my palette? It's pyro red. Oh boy. Watch this. Now you got yourself some wildflowers there. And then you can always add yellow to that. Now I just contaminated the heck out of my yellow. But uh, let's see what happens anyway. Now it's a little pinker. A little pinker. Let's... Uh, you know what? Let's take this yellow ochre and uh, let's uh, let's pour a little on the toothbrush. See what happens? 
Oh, it's a little pinker. I really wanted some yellow. And we'll give a go with this Hansa Yellow Deep. That ought to make the difference. Okay, so let's try this yellow. And you can do this as many times as you want. You see the yellow? Little yellow flowers there piling up. And uh, sometimes what I like to do is I like to go in and get like a dark, dark color. And put it in and around just to kind of enhance the other color. That's probably not that dark. But anyway, you get the idea. And then the other thing you can do is, is you could take a little titanium white, squeeze a little bit of that out, and you gotta clean your toothbrush. Well, imagine if somebody came into my house and saw that, put it, leave it on my sink. Wouldn't that be something? Take and uh, put this in. Well, I probably could use more. Could have used putting more than that on there. But you get the idea. I think we're going to leave it at that. Um, what I'll do, though, is... is um, one, I'll leave you with one last little thing. And that is... We'll put a few more of these in there. We'll bring this down into that sun. Eh, this is kind of last minute. I, you know, I was trying to cover up that piling there a little bit. So we'll just come back with some green or something. and <clears throat> Some of that green. See, so, yeah, it's always something on your palette you can get out of this. You know, get a little bit of this yellow back. Go over the top. See? And now we still got the light coming in from there. There's a little light coming in from there. And also, too, if you want to get the... Uh... Oh. Let's put a little more white out. If you can't get it with the toothbrush, you can always take your fan brush, dip it in there real good, and just kind of dance around a little bit of white in there. It'll it'll melt into there, you know. And uh, you know what? Let's do one more thing. See, this is where I get caught up in my paintings, and I, I never stop. And we're going to get a dark color going. Now there's white on my brush. That's a problem, but... I'll put that in there for fun. Put a few rocks in. Because scra scra scratching the rocks is always a crowd pleaser. You know what? Oh, what the heck. Give it a little, this red spray, huh? And then I never put in rocks without coming back and putting some dark underneath to anchor them to the bottom. I might fool around with this later, but uh, I don't want to keep you too long. Just put a little, little bit of a shore in there. You see, I always think, okay, well, uh, yeah, get the card and make this a little rocky back here. Hey, yo, a little rocky, you know? Okay. And then, of course, it's never a completed painting without the bird or a couple birds. What do you think? Huh? Show my Italian side. What do you, what do you think? Should we put a man on it and see... How we did, uh, I'm going to have to move this and just hold her up here.
Actually, this mat's too small for this paper, but you get you get the idea. I'll take a picture after it dries. Thanks for watching, everybody. Okay, so here it is in a black mat. And I went in and I just did a little touch-ups for stuff that faded. Um, made the yellow a little brighter. It faded back. So that's it. Thanks for watching.